Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other children because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long road with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem. And the man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where are they pasturing the flock? The man said, They have gone away. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. 
Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother of our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 105, 1 through 6, 16 through 22, and 45b, read responsibly by the half verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. May the heavens be among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Sing to all his marvelous works. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of heaven sing the Lord in the works. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continue to see his face. Remember the marvels he has done. His wonders in the heavens of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, the servant. O children of Jacob, the servant. Then he called for a famine in the land. And the sword is flawed and red. He sent a man before them. Joseph, the soul is a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord has sent him. The king sent him and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household. As a ruler over all his possessions. To instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For <clears throat> one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear 
without someone to proclaim them. And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord, to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus and the disciples were exhausted. 
Jesus has started the day by himself. He was dealing with the death of his close cousin, John the Baptist. When he heard the tragic news of John's beheading, he went to be alone and, and grieve. But by this time, there were crowds wherever Jesus decided to spend any time at all. Not just small crowds, hordes of people who would make day-long journeys or more just to get a glimpse of what was happening. Just for the outside chance that they or their loved ones might be healed. Jesus and his disciples ended up spending all day out in the hot Mediterranean sun with a gigantic crowd that had followed him to the seaside. In the midst of his heart breaking from the loss of John the Baptist, Jesus passed through the people again and again and again, healing left and right for literal hours. And then the sun set once again. Everyone faced the reality that Jesus was something different. That this time in their lives was something different. This was not your run-of-the-mill picnic on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. From the small offering of a child, Jesus multiplied what was given to feed the thousands who were gathered, and everyone ate their fill with plenty of leftovers. Sounds like the South on a Sunday to me. As night began to fall, Jesus started dispersing the crowds as best they could. They were a little distance away from lodging. And he told the disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him. To be honest, it was more like an order. The Greek communicates that he sternly compelled them. I suppose everyone, even Jesus, gets to the point where they've had enough for one day. After the disciples finally got into the boat and left shore, Jesus once again made his way up a mountain by himself to pray. Finally, he gets to return to the way he started this long day, mourning his cousin and getting some time to be quiet with God. Meanwhile, the disciples found themselves in Huge trouble. So it's helpful to take a step back at this moment and to know that the miraculous, the mysterious aspect of life was much more familiar to people who lived during the time of Christ than it is for us. Our modern sensibilities tend to dull our ability to appreciate these sort of things. Generally, the, the writings of the first century show us that people pretty much accepted that miracles happened, that there was a mysterious and miraculous quality of life that we have all but done away with in our day and age. We modern people have a hard time reconciling the laws of nature and science with the things that are unexplainable and unusual, but that wasn't the case for the disciples this night in the boat. The Sea of Galilee is famous, you may have heard, for being able to produce intense squalls practically out of nowhere because of the geography of the region. And this night, the wind carried the disciples out pretty far off course and the boat began to be battered and assaulted by the waves. And everyone was getting tossed back and forth in the stormy darkness. Can you imagine how much that made a difference back when the world was only lit by fire? There were no lamps that could have stayed lit during this storm. So when it got dark, it was really dark. Back then, the sea... And pretty much everything that happened 
at the sea was attributed to, to dark and sinister forces. The sea was seen as a capricious place that could just as easily take your life as it could provide fish for your belly. So in the fourth watch of the night, which would have been around 3 a.m., after an exhausting day and an even more exhausting night, fighting a storm at sea in complete darkness, the disciples were able to discern a figure in the distance coming toward them on the water. To say this struck fear in their hearts would be an extreme understatement. They were sure that the phantom of the sea had finally come to destroy them. They were sleep deprived and they were terrified and they were frankly in way over their heads at this point. Matthew 14, 24, listen to this. By this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land for the wind was against them. How many times have I felt that very thing? Like the wind of life was against me. A contrary wind, the Greek says, stuck out in the mysterious sea with no way to get back. Life can feel that way. Maybe you feel that way now. Like you're fumbling around in the dark, in over your head, and really just pretending like you have it all together. We pretend like we know what we're doing. We pretend like we know where it's all headed, but nine times out of ten, none of those things are true. But we soldier on in the face of contrary wind blowing against us, keeping us out in the storm, pushing us farther from the shore, farther away from the situations and circumstances we know and feel comfortable with out into this mysterious, unknown deep. When all seemed lost that night in the midst of their terror and as the phantom of the sea was getting closer and closer and closer. The next phrase that jumps out in the text is what the disciples hear ringing across the water. Don't be afraid. It's me. A more literal translation would be have courage. I am. This voice in the darkness was more than just Jesus identifying himself. He was making a statement about his very nature. Starting way back in Exodus when God revealed himself to Moses in the fire by saying, I am down to the words of Jesus over and over again in the Gospel of John saying, I am. This phrase was used to reveal the true nature of God at work within the context of humanity. In the middle of that dark and torrential, fearsome night when it seemed like all hope was lost and the contrary wind might just win the day, in the midst of that chaos, Jesus says, have courage, I am. <laughs> I am the ground of being. I am the great originator. I and my Father are one. I am the essence and truth of the universe. And as if anyone else would have spoken up next, our man Peter yelled out to Jesus using his own phrase in response. If you really are everything, order me to come to you on the water. 
You can hear the desperation in his voice. And suddenly his request makes perfect sense. Peter doesn't doubt that it's Jesus talking at this point. He's saying, if you really are the one that we've waited for, if our hopes and dreams are true, if you are the I am, then you can order me to come to you on the water. And Jesus, without hesitation, says, come. Most of us know the story from here. Peter climbs over the side of the boat and begins walking on the water to Jesus. And there's no mention in the story of Jesus calming the wind and the waves at all. So Peter has a lot to contend with. And he doesn't get very far before he looks at his surroundings and he starts to sink. Jesus must have been walking towards him the whole time because we see that immediately when Peter calls out for help, Jesus is there with his hand to keep Peter from going down. You of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you hesitate? And the text can be translated there. Why are you standing in two different places? Peter, either I am or I'm not. And you just walked on water. But Peter, like you and me, was hard-headed. Can't you see Jesus lifting Peter up out of the water like he's pulling him up out of a baptismal pool? Can't you see them as they walk together arm in arm back to the boat on the water? And it was only when they had climbed aboard that the storm subsided and I can hear Peter now. Now you decide to calm the storm? Even though Peter's faith was small and divided, it took him over the side of a boat in a raging storm in complete darkness to walk on water to Jesus. That makes me wonder, where is our faith taking us? Are you getting your feet wet? Are you loving those in your community in the midst of the storm and chaos in your life or are you in the boat? And look, there's, there's no judgment here. It takes a certain amount of faith just to be out in the storm in the first place. But the nature of God seems to be beckoning us further and further out into trust and faith and love and none of these things comes with the promise of safety, security, and stability. Living in the way of love means living from your heart and that doesn't always equal the most comfortable or responsible way forward. It means that we're willing to throw ourselves into a disorderly, messy, confusing, and oftentimes scary world. To love like Jesus loved, to embody love in the world, to incarnate divine love, which is abundant and unconditional. I'm afraid that the only thing that is sure about that leap of faith is that you will always find Jesus was there before you. Even now, reaching out to pull you up. So what's it going to be? Either he is or he isn't. And I, for one, believe he is. Did you ever notice how the roofs of a lot of churches 
look like the hulls of boats. <coughs> Upside down, of course. This is a really nice boat, folks. <laughs> it is. It's a beautiful boat. But Jesus is calling us out of the boat into the storm. Because we've got waves to walk on. And the hand of Jesus to reach out for. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Now let us stand and affirm the words of our ancient faith found in the Nicene Creed in your worship people. Saying together, we believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For God's our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and punished silent. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and solid church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the people. Gracious and loving God, you reach into the stormy chaos of our lives to save us from fear and bring us into new life. Hear our prayers for the needs of the suffering world and save all who call upon you as we pray. We give you thanks, O God, and call upon your name. We make known your deeds among the people. Gracious one, your church has been sent to proclaim good news to all the world. Protect us from jealousy and conflict that we may witness to your saving presence. We give you thanks, O God, and call upon your name. We make known your deeds among the people. Eternal One, our leaders and the leaders of the nations quarrel and bicker, even in the face of threatening storms of chaos, violence, illness, and fear. Strengthen their faith to walk confidently into the future, upheld by Christ's strong, compassionate hand. We give you thanks, O God, and call upon your name. We make known your deeds among the people. Compassionate One, our world is tossed by envy and jealousy, terror, fear, conspiracy, greed, bloodshed, and oppression. Reach into the hearts of your storm-tossed storm -tossed creatures and bring the peace of Jesus to all who are afraid. We give you thanks, O God, and call upon your name. We lay down your among the people. Ever-present one, let those who live in this community search for you and your strength and continue to see your face. Strengthen us to extend the confident hand of Jesus to all who share our lives here, bringing hope and peace to each of our neighbors. We give you thanks, O God, and call upon your name. 
Make known your deeds among the people. Loving God, we call upon you with believing. We pray especially for Chloe, Sissy, Molly, Beth, Casey, Steve, Cody, Danny, Sophia, Ronnie, Judith, Tanya, Carol, Liz, Rich, Brian, Rhea, and Larry, Kim and Robbie, Leslie, Kathy and Tony, and all those in need of prayer, other others. We also pray for those on our long-term prayer list. Russell, Rose Ellen, Denson, Cynthia, Stephen, Judd, Margaret, John, Donna, Kristen, Chuck, Martha, Adrian, Will, Kermit, Ivan, Dean, Janet, Jean, Tom, Pat, and Francis. We pray for all first responders and all in the armed forces and for their families. Joe, Tim, Christopher, Lewis, Patrick, Brandon, Ashlyn, Sarah Grace, Bernie, John, Hunter, Joey, Austin, Julian, Eric, Zane, and all in harm's way. Are there others? Jenny Sue. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our fellow parishes of St. Mary's in Andalusia and St. Mary's by the Sea in Coden. We pray that you weave our diocesan capital campaign into your kingdom and consecrate to your glory that which is given. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the province of the Anglican Church of Chile. We pray for all people affected by natural disasters and war. We remember the marvels you have done and the wonders and the judgments of your mouth, offering our grateful thanks, especially for the wedding anniversary of Lolly and Bob and the birthdays of Hank, Liam, Bob, Randy, and Darlene. We entrust to your never failing care and love those who have died, especially Marilyn and Holly. May all who need you hear Christ's words of comfort. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. We give you thanks, O God, and call upon your name. We remember before you this morning those who are suffering and who have suffered as a result of the tragic fires and the like. Save your children, O God, and let your gracious presence come to us, filling our hearts with your spirit, that peace may overcome enmity and that love may calm our storms. In the power of the Son of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we move into our time of uh, confession and absolution, I invite you to remain seated, to stand, or to kneel as you wish. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Sing together. God, God of mercy. We confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world we have created. To repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive and restore and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may find in your love. God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Can we stand together? My brothers and sisters, on this beautiful day, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you.
be afraid to keep peace and if you want. You can peace as much as you want. Peace. <laughs> Just a few things to mention today. Um, you know what day it is. It's potluck. Oh my goodness. I look forward to this day all month long. Uh, we've got some amazing cooks, so please do stick around, even if you didn't bring anything with you. You are invited uh, to share in the fellowship um, around Christ's table and around the tables in the parish hall um, as we uh, share in community together and celebrate the love of Christ in our midst. Um, if you are uh, new with us and you're not familiar with our traditions around the Eucharist, this is Christ's table. It's not an Episcopal table. It's not my table. And so you are welcome, whoever you are, to come and receive uh, Christ here at the table of our Thanksgiving. Um, all you must do if you want to receive the wafers, just place one hand over the other hand like this, and I'll give you uh, the host. And just allow the, the cupbearer to raise the cup to your lips and help, help guide the cup to your lips as you receive the wine. It's also perfectly acceptable to take that wafer and dip it into the wine if you'd rather do that. If you'd like to come up and just receive a blessing, you don't want to receive communion, uh, you can cross your arms over your chest and I'll give you a blessing, uh, whatever the case. And it is certainly acceptable to uh, participate in communion in um, a mysterious and mystical and holy way just by sitting there in your pew and observing it all. Uh, Christ loves you and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice. And so we seek to do the same uh, as our worship continues uh, to him. Uh, there are a couple of things I want you to notice in your, uh, in your leaflet. Uh, Canon David Johnson, our very own, is going to be leading us on a, uh, a pilgrimage to the Mississippi Civil Rights Museum. That's on September 9th. All the information you need to know about that is here in this blurb that was um, thoughtfully put together. So take a look at that and read more. And if you'd like to know more, you can certainly talk to David and uh, find out more about that. And our Tuesday discussion book club of Life of the Beloved by Henry Nowen continues uh, this Tuesday. And uh, believe it or not, this is a book you can really just kind of jump in on at any point. And so you don't have to have spent the whole time reading up to this point. If you'd like to just join us on Tuesday, uh, for lunch and discussion, uh, it definitely lends itself to that. All these chapters kind of stand on their own as something that you can read. We've got a couple more books in Jan's office if you'd like to be a part of that, so I invite you to do that as well. Walk in love, my brothers and sisters, and offer yourself to God as Christ offered himself, a sacrifice and an offering.
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, for you are the source of life and light, the God of all time and our time. We are grateful for the ways that you've been revealed to us in the past, through the memories of life that have shaped us into who we are today, and through a shared hope for the consolation and redemption of the world through our Lord Jesus Christ. Confident of your love, we bring our whole selves into your presence, our achievements and our failures, our proud moments and our hidden shame, our undying dreams and our steadfast resolve. At this table of grace and goodness, we meet you through a sacred communion with all of creation. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. <coughs> then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, blessed it, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for all. Do this to remember me. Therefore, together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of your Son, O God. By means of this holy bread and wine, we show forth the sacrifice of his death and proclaim his resurrection. Now gather at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Come, Holy Spirit, come upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Come, Holy Spirit, come upon us, that in sharing this feast we may become the body of Christ. Break down our walls of selfishness and fear. Bring us to that new age in which none go hungry and all are fed. Make us mindful of our oneness with all creation, so that this meal may become a true communion with the one who makes every tomorrow possible. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us down into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may the wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.